Okay, would you like to be the first one to come to give your testimony answers of prayers? Okay? Oh. Oh, yeah, oh, ready? <laughs> you are praying for something, your financial life, or personally, and God brought the answer that you are. Remember, guys, remember. God wanted you to pray specifically. Okay? Uh, 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 everybody try to get a place, okay, to sit. Okay? God wanted you to pray. Pray specifically. Because when he give, he give to you and you know it was God that made. This was a miracle. Because come specifically. Understand? Uh, 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 uh. So learn. Learn to ask. Make a list what you specific what you need or God or feel that God is putting your heart. And make a list and pray specifically about. It. And you see. How is amazing the end of the year? How you you put a line and say God is God is wow 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 the impossible can happen. Go, what happened? So uh, me and my wife Sarah, we were just we were praying for a one bedroom apartment, and it, we kept getting like you know offers, but then it was offering to like December or like next year for one bedroom apartment, or they were super expensive. And I was like. Know, we were getting like very anxious and worried. When, when, when you had to leave your apartment? Uh, we had to leave by June 22nd. You had to leave. So yeah. for sure, June 22nd, you have to be out. Yes. And we were, um, I, you know, I, I was praying. I went to scripture. I got a rema from God, a confirmation okay. that we're going to get a one bedroom. Yes. On the day we move out or a week before. Come on. So I, I, I was like. Confident. What God said to you? What was your rema? What was. The faith from God that was planted in your heart. So what about it? So it, it was basically like, I forgot the, the scripture out of my phone. But um, it was basically that, you know, don't, do not worry. For he, you know, he's, gonna, he's a provider. And there's no need to worry because worry is basically not of God. You know, just to, be, to have faith in him. And I had this confirmation. I, and I had this face. I'm like, Sarah, we're gonna get to the apartment. And then Sarah wasn't so sure. I'm like, babe, like I, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna put my, you know, faith from God. I have this confirmation. I'm not gonna lose hope. I'm focusing on Him and not on the storm. So I was, you know, praying, fasting, and just like continue doing my secret place. And then like on Thursday, I got a call from an apartment place, and they told me that. The available, they have one bedroom apartment available by May 30th. Woo! Yeah, like, yeah. That was not good. I got goosebumps, so that was not good. Yeah. Yeah. Our God's like the next. So, Tony, the stage is yours, brother. Yeah. Tony, please. Sorry for the surprise. It's okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like Kyle said, we uh, had him in our home, and Aaliyah stayed with another uh, member of our staff, and we were so glad that they came together to be a part of the uh, two and a half day conference. That the idea of it was renew your passion. We all need to be renewed in our hearts, and specifically because we're a missions organization, renewed with the gospel getting out. So. Uh, yeah, we had different leaders from the field came and shared. Um, uh, we just had we just had a, a, a report from the field that uh, somebody was soup, was sick, and one of our pastors was known as a man of prayer, and the person was raised from the dead. Wow! I'm, and I wouldn't just say I'm not just saying that. I heard this wow. just just on Tuesday. Like they showed the picture. It was kind of a but yeah, like that was the person, and wow. you know, and I don't know how to process that. It's like, <laughs> For real. like I'm walking home, going, "What did whoa, I just whoa, hear?" Whoa, 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 whoa. But I'm not saying that just to make a, a story. But we're seeing like the Book of Acts on the mission field. That's our blueprint. We don't have a, we don't have a like a system or every, or anything. We just tell our missionaries to go and pray, go start a church, go tell people about Christ. And so, share a little bit. Uh, what is the mission? What is yeah. mission doing? Yeah. So, how many heard of the 1040 window? 
so yeah, so for you and others, the, the 1040 window, just imagine a, a rectangle over uh, North Africa, uh, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia, 10 degrees latitude, 40 degrees longitude. And that's where they say 3 billion people live that have not heard the gospel. Our missionaries will go into a village, and I'm not making this story up either, that our, our you know, because people have lived in that village their whole life, their, their family have, their great grandparents have, they don't have no reason to leave that village. So our missionaries will go into there and say, hey, have you heard of Jesus? And they'll say, well, I've lived here my whole life. Nobody here lives by that name, the name of Jesus. Check the next village. <laughs> so so our, our mission is, like, like Kyle said, is to raise up national missionaries. So, you know, for me to go to learn the language and the culture and to live there for five or ten years before I even plant a church, but our national missionaries are planting churches every single day. So, and, and specifically where, you know, in the villages, in the very difficult areas, we have, uh, I've been, been to a leprosy ministry where leprosy is still a thing where they're cast away from their society and our missionaries go and love on them. And one of our missionaries, you know, you think of a missionary going, plant a church, preach the gospel, which they do, but one of my heroes, they make, you know, because leprosy, you have, uh, you lose the feeling in your hands and your feet. And so they're cast out of society, so they go to a leprosy colony, right? But two, two of our missionaries, their job is to make special shoes for the, for the lepers and love on them that way. I'm just like, ah, you guys are awesome. So anyways, that's what we do. We train up national missionaries. What is a national? Because I know they... they... They don't understand this shift that is happening in mission. Yeah. As you see, my church is a baby church, right? <laughs> uh, as some of my older leader, leaders, they understand. But uh, the shift that is happening in mission yeah. from transcultural missionary to national missionary. Sure, sure. And I didn't come to take part. No, this. don't worry, my brother. So, uh, so let's, let's think of missions in three ways, right? The book of Acts. The apostles went out. The apostle Paul went out preached the gospel where Christ was not known, Persecuted, persecution happened, and they were sent out, okay, books, book of Acts. That would be the first wave of missions. The second wave, we would say, was maybe in the 1800s with Amy Carmichael and William Carey for going out to do missions. But now there's this third wave of missions, and it's, it's the national missionary movement where God is raising up indigenous missionaries that live in these countries because most of the countries in the 1040 window we're not allowed to go because of, we're not allowed to go there to preach the gospel we can't get in there to preach the gospel so what we do is train up those that live in the countries because they, it makes more sense they're more effective they have the same Holy Spirit right Amen. <laughs> they know the language and the culture and they're just living simple lives living with the people. So wow. the national missionary movement is in indigenous brothers and sisters that are trained, you know, three-year Bible college, and they're sent out. And so we'll say that's the third wave of missions. And I think it's the, really the, one of the main ways we're going to get the Great, Great Commission fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so, uh, yeah, amen. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Guys, remember that how I, I mentioned it to you about EM0, EM1, EM2, EM3, right? EM0, right? Remember. Uh, 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 so, EM0, remember when you're uh, helping a church in your own culture? to get fire again, to grow again, right? EM1, Evangelist and Missions 1, is when you plant your church or sell a cell church in your own culture, remember? Yeah. EM2, when you go to a culture that is similar, 
like I did from Brazil to, to Portugal, right? E EM3 is? Outside. Outside. Yeah. So when he's saying, uh, 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 he's saying nationals now, he say that now uh, 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 in India, the main uh, nations in India, I'm reading the book, I'm almost finished the book. Uh, 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 this third wave now is bad. Because Americans, that was the main force, can't say answer there. There is a expectation that revival, remember the sand? Yes. What the sand is talking about? Yes. A revival from Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, come back to United States and go to nations, right? Uh, in 1987, I was in Comibam, 87. Did you hear about uh, Iberic uh, Conference uh, in Brazil in 1987? It was uh, a, a George Bush the, at that time, he was famous in the United States. But I think he mentioned the book George Bush in the book. I, I, I'm not sure. God put in his heart to, to do this conference in Brazil to declare Brazil and South America no longer a missionary field, but a body to missions. And 3,000 leaders from Portugal, Spain, Central America, South America, met there. I was there. Everything that God confirmed to me to go to Portugal happened there. In 1985, God said to me, this is only introduction for what I'm going to ministry. God said to me, I was praying, I, Ronaldo Lidorio, uh, Filinto and Alfredo, we are praying for missions. I was, I was a freshman in, in the theology seminary. And we are praying for missions. God put Ronaldo and Alfredo to go to Africa, to travel to Africa, to, to study the culture and come back uh, to Brazil. For one year they did this. And Ronaldo went back to, to work with uh, Ingenia Conakry with the Cocombas, and a revival happened there. A church with 4,000 people was raised in that culture with Ronaldo Dorio. He's considered today one of the most, uh, the biggest missionary that South America and Brazil produced. Because what happened there was unbelievable. And still, is happening there. And God said to me, he put in my heart, you're gonna go to Portugal. I was 19 years old when God said this to me. And how are you going to go? To, I didn't know where it was, literally, I didn't know where it was, was Portugal. <laughs> but I knew that they speak Portuguese because we have some product from Portugal in Brazil. And I went to the map, say, oh, Portugal is in Europe. You don't have idea for a kid. 19 years old to go to Portugal in Europe in 1985. Think about this was impossible. Fry, you 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 buy a ticket in a flight. Was you have literally you have to sell your car in Brazil to buy a good car to buy a ticket in that time. Understand? I always was traveling from my my school to my city. Uh, 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 two days in a bus because it was impossible to buy a ticket to go uh, uh, to my house. I did this 11 times, I don't know. No. Guys, how are we going to go? I don't know. In the start, you can find it. You call me, you, you're going to do. You're going to do. And, and uh, Ronaldo went to Sao Paulo when he came back. He brought uh, uh, this mark to mark uh, 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 in your Bible, put a mark in your Bible. And, and he, he brought and he said, uh, uh, LA, a, 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 con a conference, missionary conference, Iberic missionary conference was going to happen in Sao Paulo. I was two days by bus 
to São Paulo. É, 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 this will be amazing, fantastic. And when I, I hold that marker, the Holy Spirit said to me, you have to be there. Because everything that I'm going to prepare for you to go to Portugal will happen there. I heard, okay. But how go there? How? Because two days by bus, two days to come back, four days. The conference will be a whole week. I would uh, miss class and I would fail the semester. Buy a ticket, my Lord. <laughs> So God, and long shorts, no. <laughs> my presbytery that was paying, presbytery in the group of church that was paying my school, always was sent to the northeast to Brazil. The North uh, Presbyterian Theology Seminary. Something happened. Uh, 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 a pastor that you're you gonna give a word against will be transferred. He went to lunch. When he came back, he was already vote, and everybody went back, went to transfer to the south of Brazil, a uh, south of the Presbyterian seminary. God moved, and suddenly uh, uh, the next semester will be there in the south. It was only one hour from Sao Paulo, and they went. To, to recruit people to help in the, 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 the combi bar. And I, I, of course, I said, <laughs> I know, and for free, we have to work, work hard, but I, I'll be there. And, and I was there, first day nothing happened. In that time, because of my calling, I was talking with uh, 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 the, the, the direct the board of the missions, uh, uh, missions board of my church for me to have a missionary experience. Remember, always because God said when I was 18 years old that one day I would have a large missionary church. Okay, this is a little bit of contest for you. And for me to be a pastor for a large missionary church, local missionary church, I have to have a missionary experience. So, uh, 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 I went to Paraguay. I was still talking with them, but uh, 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 I went to Paraguay and I went to Bolivia to have a, a missionary experience. In the conference, I was giving flyer about the conference every day in the morning. The 3,000 coming. The first day passed, nothing happened. Second day path not happened. The third day path not happened. The fourth day path not happened. Was the last day I was fight with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you brought me here, and nothing's happening. What is happening? Like fight. I don't understand nothing. I don't. You brought me. Literally, I was. I don't understand nothing. I'm lost. It, just today, the last day when I was fight with him, a friend came. Three thousand. He came in my direction. Look. Oh, his nickname was Mustache. <laughs> Mustache! <laughs> Brazilian. <laughs> Mustache! Oh, my God. Oh. And I heard that he was in the United States. He said, No, I'm not in the United States. I am in Portugal. I said, What? In Portugal. And I came with another two American missionaries because we need help in Portugal. Wow. wow. Oh, 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 oh. You didn't hear this story? Not this exact one, no. <laughs> and wow. It's, look, let me share why I'm here. And I share with him. And he said, Elaine, come with me. Okay. And he introduced for the two missionary. And we start to, and this missionary already was taught with him. Uh, the director, the, the president of the, 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 the board, the missions board of my church, and suddenly I was talking with the three of guys that have to decide something about the missions, they go to Portugal. And they talk, and they, yeah, I said, no, we need to know, you can go to work with the youth, you need young people there, and yeah, nah, nah, nah. 
Now I, I wasn't 19. 19 I received the, the, the fire. Uh, uh, 85 was 87. To the two years later. When this happened, and we start working, the conference happened, and, and, and when I finished doing my work, I tried to find the missionaries, and I couldn't find them. I couldn't, because I'm going to talk more, get the address, the name, the, the phone, everything, right? I couldn't find. The conference finished. And God, I have nothing. I don't, I don't want to talk with them. And the, 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 the president of the missions of my church invited me to go to his house in the weekend to be with him, to talk about, uh, because I was preparing to go to, to, to Bolivia at that time. And I went, when I get in his house, I met one of the missionaries who was there, hosting his house, and we slept three days in the same room. Like that. God sent the pastor that was my pastor when I was a, a, a teenager. They took him to work in Portugal. When I, I said who I was and they, and, they, and they spoke with this pastor there, he said, I know where they, since he was a little kid. Long, long, long short story. That I have five people that have to approve me to go to Portugal from this board. They, was need, they asked, to go to missions, you have to be married. I was single. Praying a lot, but single. <laughs> you need $900 mentally as support. $900 in Brazil in the end of the 80s was, it was about $5,000 today. It was impossible. You, for us to think about, it was it is impossible. And, and be approved for these guys. Okay, God? You know. It was 87. I was planning to finish the theological seminary and go to Portugal. So I have two years. Right? The first guy, he invites me. Uh, I was in the seminary now. Okay, I need to focus to raise money. To raise money. Uh, uh, and it, so my friends, Billy, Pastor Billy, that was a, a massacre. He helped me a lot, getting my, my missionary letters, uh, going to, they are all over. They are working, helping church all over uh, 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 Southwest and South of Brazil. And we went, they take my letter. Some pastors start to invite me to preach in that church, and I was preaching missions. Uh, long, that one, okay, thank you. <laughs> Guys, in two years preaching, two years preaching, December 4th, 1988, I had a, prom a letter, a promise from church. I have one letter, $25. I have to have letters from church, as promise, uh, ready, ready in January. One month later, I had to have. I was laid down, I was finishing my thesis, missions, responsibility of the local church. I was finished my thesis. Lay down on the bed and pray and say, God, I did my part. You know how I did my part. And, and I said, God, 
But I believe that what I couldn't do in two years, you still can do. You still can do, Father. I still can do. 6 a.m., Carlos Eston, passing the house that I was, uh, Zilka and Leonardo. Unfortunately, Zilka died. Zilka was the one that was preaching the gospel with me when I was, I just received Jesus, she was 16. She left Jesus and she was killed by her husband, drug husband. Not husband, partner. I was there and Carlos passed and said, Pastor, Pastor, Elay, you receive a call from Portugal. What? From Portugal? Yeah, they want you call this number. I went. A call from Brazil to Portugal at that time. You have to sell a leg to pay. <laughs> How are you going to call? I was broke. broke. How are you going to call Portugal? But the deacon of the, 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 the theological seminar, he was pastor of my mom when my mom was a teenager. And I explained to him, he said, no, really, you're going to call from this number, this phone now. And I call. Can you see? Can yeah. you see? Wow. And I call. This is our God. This is our God. And I did. When I spoke with the missionary over there, he said, oh, uh, 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 how much did you get it? I said, look, I got $25. <laughs> From the 900 that he said that I need, I got a, a, a $25. He said, yeah. <laughs> but you are single, right? I said, yes. He said, you don't need 900. You need 700. A single. I said, OK. <laughs> and he said, he said, half I can give it to you from my support. Wow. What? 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 <laughs> half I can give for you. He said, oh, okay, okay, I'm going to call the president of the, 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 the mission uh, board. And he said, okay. And I called him, Pastor Levandro. I got this, I spoke with this guy, he said this for me, and he, he said he gave me $350. He said, LA, I was to call you. He said, yeah, yeah. And he said, first, first, I got from the, 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 the church, uh, uh, no, I spoke with the Portuguese, this Portuguese that I knew, uh, I, I heard only. He was rich, had a lot of stores in Sao Paulo. I, I, I spoke with him about you, and he offered to give a hundred dollar monthly for you. So, what? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Four hundred and fifty dollars plus twenty five. So, whoa! Yeah, yeah, and he said, Look, uh, 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 in the, the rest of the money, I can get it from, from, from the church. Oh. So, what? Yeah, you have the money. You have the support. Oh, wow. Come to Sao Paulo because you're going to meet the Portuguese guy who want to talk with you. Because now I was thinking, no, go back now to my, to my region now. Someone want to have to sell that, that car <laughs> because I don't have car. Because I need a ticket. But I think between my friends, I can get this ticket. Right? And, and when I... Uh, uh, I went to Portugal to meet this guy Paulo. in São Paulo, São Paulo to meet this guy, uh, uh, Bernardo Tavares, and he's rich, rich, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and I tell my story for him, what God was doing, the next day I was there, and talked with him, and he, and he looked to me and said, and, uh, uh, and what do you need more? Uh, 
I said, no, I made the ticket now to Portugal, but between my friends, I think God is going to provide you, give you the ticket. And it's, he looked to his wife, don't worry, I, we give you the ticket to you. Wow. <laughs> Next day I came back from Sao Paulo. Guys, literally, There is a huge corridor in the seminary. And I was walking in that corridor and I was crying. And he asked to go and say, please, please stop. Stop. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Stop. I can't, Simon. I can't. I was feeling that I'm gonna die because I was seeing his cry. The way that I never could imagine it. Literally, I was, I was literally dying, feeling that I was dying with this manifestation of his glory. I remember in my room, I down in my bed and say, please God, please stop, stop. I can't anymore, I can't anymore, I can't anymore, I can't anymore, I can't anymore. March, March 20th of 1989, I was arriving in Portugal with my guitar, a lot of bags, <laughs> 23 years old, for 23 years in Portugal. Guys, and I'm here. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, you heard the stories, how I am here, yeah. how I am here. I had, I had a whole message to minister today. <laughs> uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, go to Matthew 25. I, I, I'll be short, guys. Twenty-five what? Matthew twenty-four, verse twenty-five. Sorry. Twenty-five. Twenty-nine. Twenty-five, twenty-nine. Mm-hmm. Read it. Please. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he even what he has will be taken away. Keep going? No. Okay. From this is the parable of talents. Most of us know from 14 until uh, 30. My brother, my sister, this is that there is a whole need in our nation. So many other gospels have been preached in the United States. That is not the gospel. Yeah. Your generation, Gen Z generation. Uh, uh, is not being read because what they hear from the church is not resonating their heart anymore. This is a whole challenge that God put for us here and to nations. Right? Normita received her passport. <laughs> now officially she's going with me in Cayo. Guys, but what have to guide me and you is this conscience in Jesus that one day you're going to be accountable. Yeah. One day you and me will be accountable. 
right now. Jesus and the accountability in his kingdom. Jesus and the accountability in his kingdom. Point one. Let's understand the kingdom. Matthew 13 has several parables about the kingdom of God. And when Jesus is introduced here, he says, For the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God that is mentioned in, 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 in Luke and Mark is the same. It's like a man traveling to a far country. So he's talking about the reality of the kingdom of God. And he's talking about the accountability that you and me, one day you're going to uh, uh, have to have to Jesus as the Lord of his kingdom. Yeah. King of God, there is a definition from a Catholic uh, uh, priest that is interesting that he says the King of God is every sense, every dimension of society be taking the submission to Jesus' lordship. What is this every dimension, every sense, every purpose? Uh, 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 where's Maria? Oh, is it? Maria, she's dreaming to be a, a, a surgeon, right? Surgeon. surgeon, right? We need a lot of uh, uh, physicians and surgeons because the kingdom of God has to go today, yeah. right? Teachers have to be teachers. Understand that this is only my mission art field. Because now I have to take Jesus' lordship in this reality. Right? We are going to HCC. Because that school needs the reality of the kingdom entering there. We are fighting back in Leto High School. The devil, yes, 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 yes. Elena and Anita need people, uh, people to join, to, to enter in this team. Yeah. We, they went to do evangelism, surround the laptop. You want to, you, we, uh, he doesn't know the story, you want to know the story. <laughs> How we start in Leto in the counterattack that you receive there mm. with the pandemic and a, a teacher. But we are fighting back to enter back, back there. Are you getting it, guys? Yes. So every sense, every dimension, where you are, needs to go to the Lordship of Jesus. This Jesus that died and rose from the death and he's alive. Okay. He's manifested God's glory. Do you know what's glory, right? This is real manifestation of God to us. So, King of God. Jesus is saying, saying the kingdom of God is a reality that you and me one day will be accountable. Right? Point two. Jesus is the Lord in his kingdom. In Matthew 13, when Jesus is explaining the parable, one of the parables there, and the, 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 the wheat Wheat, not weed. Wheat <laughs> and there. He says, he says, uh, uh, the Lord that sowed the seeds, he says, is the Son of God. So he says, Jesus is the Lord of his kingdom. Jesus is the Lord of his kingdom. Jesus is that one that everything that you have to do in your school, where you are now, you are going, God is taking you to work in this uh, 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 health area, right? So many people need the kingdom of God, Jesus as, as your Lord. Yeah. The power, the darkness is controlling the system. Yeah. 
Satan is controlling the system. But when you enter in any reality that you are, Jesus had to shine there. These miracles that you, I share here, you share here, you have to share where you go. Yeah. For them to see that our Jesus is alive. Amen. Our God is real. Yes. Real. Because the whole system is the kind of God is dead. The whole post-modernity the whole post-modernity saying philosophically, God is dead. Child is down and kill God in the nature, in the biology. You don't need God. And they need more faith to explain how the, the big explosion comes. How the biggest pro biological big explosion happen from nothing for, for, for matter bring life. How how the another big base explosion explosion had to happen. How something that or, or only a being became an intelligent being. This is another big man. Like, how? How this happened? The same. So but the whole system is imposing say God is there. But you need to go there with the uh -huh. kingdom of God. Yes. Because the Bible says the kingdom of God is in you now. Amen. Luke chapter 7, 20, 21 says that the kingdom is in you. This presence, this power is in you. And you have, you have to go there and take Jesus, Jesus Christ with large shape there. Satan is, is, is reigning there. Satan is controlling that. You're going to enter and step up to share Jesus, yes. to show Jesus, to pray for Jesus, to exercise your authority to pray for, for people. And people see God manifest. Point three. Point three. The Bible says that God gives talent for his servants in his kingdom. Jesus, sorry, Jesus gave a talent. And it uh, was about uh, six. Oh, the Holy Spirit woke me up to talk to me and say, for <laughs> your long time, your ministry, you are teaching wrong. This parable. I say, what? The Holy Spirit. Wow! <laughs> I have a bachelor in theology. <laughs> I have a postgraduate in sociology in Europe. <laughs> yeah, you teach it wrong. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. Because always you, you thought uh, that talent was give, potential that uh, 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 I give it to people. Spiritual gift that I give to people, but it's not. I said, how not? And, and, and he said, look, look at the verse. And he says, he who called his own servant and delivered his goods to them. So he called his son and gave his goods to them. What was God's goods? What is God's goods? God, the, the servants already had the potential that they have, right? The whole verse shows that uh, uh, for one that had more, the verse, uh, look at the verse, uh, uh, say uh, verse 15, and to another one to eat according to his own ability. Those ability. So they already had the ability. The talent, natural talent, and the spiritual gift. They already had. And he gave something. Right? For they exercise what they already had. So they have this ability. And you know talent and gift is already the potential, what the Holy Spirit puts you for you to exercise. And God gave his good. What is his good? What is his good? What God gave to me, to you, to expand his kingdom. 
Huh? Huh? The Holy Spirit is good. What do you and me as a servant have to do in God's kingdom? Win souls. Ministry. Second Corinthians chapter 3, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Because now he, he making us ministers of the new, this new alliance covenant. Right? Not from the letter, but from the Holy Spirit. Right? And chapter 4, verse 1 say, and because he gave it this, because you have this ministry, ministry, second his mercy, don't lose hope. So God give for me and for you. Remember, the word ministry is service. Remember, first, second Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says that in this ministry we preach a gospel, not with craftiness. But Jesus and Jesus crucified. Yeah. It is not the only the letter, but the, he said in First Corinthians chapter 3, he said, and I decide not to go to persuasive words of wisdom for you, uh -huh. but manifestation uh -huh. of the Holy Spirit in the power of the cross. Amen. Right or wrong? Amen. God gave him ministry for me for you. To share Jesus, to preach Jesus. To help others. Others. Born again. When you born again, you went to where? What Jesus says in Job 3 3? Pastor Kyle? No one can enter the kingdom unless he's born again. I get it. Ministry is about this. The Holy Spirit is empowering you and me. So, what is the point three? What is the point three? Talent is ministry. Talent is ministry. You and me, we are ministers in the ministry to announce, to preach the gospel and making disciples of all nations. All nations. It's about ministry. Preach the gospel, make disciples. Build your ministry. We had our uh, we had our macros life group right uh, two weeks ago, right, right. It was nice to see here, right. Each disciple that in my team with their own disciples there, they are built their ministry. They are disciples training you, helping you to grow, for us together taught nations. Amen. Right or wrong? Right. Look, point four. What is the theme? What is the theme? Jesus and the accountability in his kingdom. Jesus and the accountability in his kingdom. In his kingdom. Right? The point four. You be accountable. You're gonna be accountable. Accountable. Second, second, the ministry that God gave to you. Guys, one, God get, it, get five talents, five talents, uh, 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 three, uh, three years. The lexical says that it's about a thousand dollars today. Five thousand uh, five talents will be about five thousand dollars. The first one gets five and work and get another five, right? The second is if two, right? Work and get another two. The third guy, he said, Oh. I knew that you you harvested what you didn't sow. Right? You you scattered. Scattered? Where you didn't uh, you did the harvest. 
So I was afraid and I, I buried it. And for the first one, what Jesus did? What did Jesus say? His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have you are faithful over few. I will make you rule over many things in the, in the joy, into the joy of your Lord. He says the same for the second that you receive it too. It's exactly the same. Because you're going to be accountable for what God has prepared for you to do for him. You are creature of God, created in Jesus Christ. To do what God, before the world was created, he created you. Ephesians chapter 2, 10, paraphrase the verse. God created you for a specific mission, a specific Ministry that only you can raise here in New England, in Jesus. For where God sent you. He has a calling for you. Because this is so important. When you're going to marry. Who you're going to marry. And which career you're going to have. God has to say clear to you. Because these two things, you want to guide you and establish a foundation for you to, to build God's kingdom where God sent you to work or to live. But always you want to be about ministry. Share Jesus, make disciples. Get it together, these disciples. Make a powerful team through your life group. Like Jesus did. Multiply your life group. Raise 12 like Jesus did. Raise 70. The second team of Jesus was 70. Right? Yeah. Train the second team like Jesus. Make a team. Bigger is your dream. More team you need. More teams you need. God already has for you. God has for you. He had ten, he had five, he had two. Oh, but God gave five for my pastor. I like five. Yeah, you can one five. But be faithful with two that God gives to you now. Yeah. Because if you be faithful with the old disciple that God gives to you, do you know who is your, your first disciple? How is his name? Wrong. Why he's wrong? Do you know what your first disciple? No. You know. You should know. His wife. Your wife is your first disciple. Your husband is your first disciple. Ephesians chapter 5, 21. Be submissive to one another in the fear of the Lord. 22, wives. Three verse. 24, may love your wife. Nine verse. I need to finish. <laughs> Are you getting, guys? Are you getting? Be faithful what God put give to you now. If you not take care of your husband or your wife, God is going to give you such for you for what? Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Because when you're faithful, what gave to you, God is going to give. Who received that one that was took from that guy? Who received that talent? Who has five or who has two? Five. Five. Why? Because this is a principle. Who has what Jesus says? What the verse 29 that you read says? For 
to everyone who has, more will be given. This is a character. This is identity. If someone is broke and he asks money for you, lend money for you. It's easy to lend money for someone that you know is always broke. It's easy. No? Why? Why? Because it's the same principles that uh, in the United States we apply, uh, we apply for you to get a credit. You have your credit, right? You have points, right? How you build points? If you pay your, 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 your credit, debit cards or credit cards, your mortgage, your car, right? So what did this show? Shows that you have consistency. Emotionally, psychologically, you are consistent. This is applying exactly the same here. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, if you're born again, if you have a current intimacy with Jesus, you be, you're going to have cons consistency. You are disciplined in Jesus. You create a habit to you. A habit to you, you're going to create a culture surrounding you. And you raise disciples. You raise the disciples. Like Jesus, through you, ministering to you. The last thing to finish, I promise. The last thing here is <laughs> if you not be faithful with God is giving to you ministry, you're going to get a consequence. You're going to get a consequence, if you like or not. But the worst consequence is to show in this verse here, in this situation here. Because what was the excuse for the third one? The third one says what he said to, to, to Jesus in the, in the parable here. What he says? I knew you to be a hard man. Verse 24. Reaping where you have not sowing. Gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid of you. And went and, and hid your talents in the ground. Look. <laughs> there you have it. What is yours? What Jesus says to him? But the Lord answered and he said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and get where I have not scattered seeds. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bunkers. They have bunkers in that time that give interest in that time as well. And after my, uh, uh, at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ta ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given. And he will have abundance. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, from him who does not have, even what he is, he has, will be taken away. And he cast the um, prophetos, unprofitable servant into the outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth wow. the problem was the Lord or the servant because Jesus destroyed his argument here Say, okay, if you say that I am this evil person, the way that you're saying, 
So, you should really be afraid because you said, oh, I was afraid of you. Because I know how harsh you are. How you take what wasn't yours, but you have power. Into. Oh, oh, oh. So I bear it. And Jesus destroyed his argument saying what? If you really was afraid of me, if you really I was this kind of person that you are saying that I was, you would give to the bankers. Because you knew being devil the way that you described me, I would have my 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 my, my interest in my money. Right? He said the problem is not me, it's your heart. You don't value me. You don't know me. You are rebel. Always rebel people. Then you're going to describe the leader the way that the leader is not. The leader is not perfect. Any leader is perfect. But the rebels always are going to emphasize the flaws that you have as imperfect people. Person, understand to justify what they don't want to do for Jesus. Always the problems in the leader, not in their self. Always what though is happening in their ministry to win people, disciple people, to open life group, to get the team, to build the ministry, to make missions. Always you be the mistake of someone. But what Jesus says. You are weak. You are selfish. You want to be your own Lord. You don't know me. You don't know me. You are your own God. Your own Lord. And you come with this argument to me. Do you really think that you're going to deceive me? Guys, you really think when you go to the Jesus court, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, one day I, you and me will be gone accountable. Jesus says here, one day, you and me will be accountable. We'll be accountable. Be in his presence to be accountable about what you should do in the ministry and you did it. Do you really think that your argument is going to work there? Oh, Jesus. Oh, was my wife. Oh, Jesus. Oh, was my pastor. You see me, my pastor. Oh, my disciple. My disciple was a problem. Remain, remain. Bebe. He's running from you? No. No? Ah. Uh -huh. He's taking a break. Oh, he's, he's taking a break. He needs a break. He needs a break. Okay. <laughs> Are you getting, guys? Oh, I, had, I was too busy. Oh, my job. You know, Jesus, my job. Oh my, oh, the, oh, I did a heavy time, Jesus. Oh, I was too broke emotionally, Jesus. My mom, my, my pa, my story, my grandpa. Jesus, I, you know, Jesus, you know, I had a dog. I had to take care of my dog, you know. <laughs> No, now your dog grew up, right? No, your dog is nice. <laughs> that dog was possessed, my lord. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I get it, guys. Let's stand up. <sighs> guys. You came. You came. You know Jesus. You are experiencing Jesus here the way that few people can experience. You are experiencing Jesus in your sixth place the way that few people can experience. The reality of Jesus has been some time over all over us here. Over your life, you know, for you that's more time here. 
You know the noise. Be under his lordship and make you capable. Have the privilege, have his Holy Spirit in you. The same Holy Spirit that created the whole universe. Is the same Holy Spirit that is in you. The same Holy Spirit that made you minister of this new covenant, new alliance, new pact, new merit in Jesus. He only wants sincerity in you. Be sincere. Let the Holy Spirit now, now destroy every skills in your heart. Every skills in your heart. For you not be praying, fasting for souls. For you not facing your fears, your insecurities. To share Jesus. For you not be sharp. Sharing Jesus with the, the diagram. For you to be lazy. To watch it. Watch. Watch again a video that help you. To learn how to share Jesus. For you get distracted hours. Hours in YouTube. But don't go to our channel. To watch how to make disciples. How do discipleship? How do consolidation? You watch everything, but not spend time training and preparing yourself <coughs> to be used by the Holy Spirit to make disciples of all nations. The Holy Spirit is here in moving us. The Holy Spirit is here in moving us. We already start to talk to nations. Next month. Next month. As church, we're going to go to Brazil to help that church that is on fire to receive us. Let the Holy Spirit destroy the arguments inside of you. The sophism, the false argument, the false excuses. Because the Holy Spirit is saying, this is the power that I gave to you. And you can, 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 you can. In the Holy Spirit, you can. Surrender, the Holy Spirit says to you, surrender.